What's up guys? Today, we're gonna talk about gray market cameras because there's a lot of myths I've seen and heard and all that stuff about them and they're simply just not true. So let's get into it. Now I wanna mention that I'm mainly going to be talking about Canon cameras because I know the most about gray market Canon cameras. Canon even has a link on their website that talks about gray market cameras so you can get to learn a little bit more about them. Uh, however, I've done a little bit more research than just that webpage, but now I don't know a ton about other brands such as Sony or Nikon, etc. However, I would imagine the rules are pretty similar. I just know that, you know, the facts I'm gonna give you are mainly for Canon. Let's get to the first topic and what is a gray market camera? Now, if you don't even know what a gray market camera is, Here's a explanation. Any Canon brand product which is imported and sold other than by Canon authorized dealers are referred to gray market or parallel products. Now, what does this mean? So basically the way it works is, this is generally for anything ever, like refrigerators, TVs, whatever, any brand. So a brand will tell a company such as Best Buy or B&H how much they can sell their product for. So say the EOS R, Canon will say, okay, B&H and Best Buy, the minimum amount you can sell this camera for right now is $2,000. Now they might come and say you can sell it for $1,800 or 15 if there's a sale or Black Friday, but Canon does regulate the way that the prices work. What happens is just general retailers or regular like third-party businesses will get their hands on a bunch of products such as the EOS R, uh, whether they be from the United States or overseas, most of the time they're shipped from overseas in a different country, and then they'll sell it for whatever price they want because they're not authorized Canon sellers. Now, since they have their own pricing and they're not authorized Canon sellers, that is technically a gray market camera because it's not sold by an authorized Canon dealer. Now, this is where the miscomprehension usually comes into play is there is a huge category of people that could be gray market sellers. It doesn't have to be some random sketchy guy who's counterfeit making these Canon cameras and selling them for money. It could be like me. I could somehow get my hands on 50 Canon EOS R cameras for hella cheap from who knows where. And then I could resell them for $500 less than the lowest price on an authorized dealer. And I would be selling gray market cameras even though they're legitimate cameras. That's kind of how the third party market works and why they're called gray market cameras. One of the big myths that go around with these cameras is that Canon won't touch them. Now that's true and untrue and I'll get into that. Gray market cameras aren't necessarily always a bad thing. You just kind of have to look out for the bad signs. One of the biggest things when you're looking to buy a gray market camera is watch out for sketchy dealers. So you may not be in the market for a gray market camera, but this, the US R is legitimately a gray market camera. I bought it on eBay from a third party seller. Now, when I got mine, it was brand new in a brand new Canon American box and it came with a brand new American OEM battery charger, which is pretty rare in my opinion. A lot of the times with gray market cameras, you'll get a no OEM box or it'll be a Chinese or Asian OEM box and it'll come with an aftermarket American adapter because it was shipped from overseas. So the company who sells it will put in a random battery charger for you, usually a cheap one. And uh, that's kind of one of the ways you can tell if it's a gray market camera, if you're unsure. Um, the other thing to watch out for is on the bottom of your camera here, there is a serial number right here. And the thing with gray market cameras, the sketchy ones at least, some of them don't come with serial numbers, which is a huge sign to return that camera and look elsewhere because that's a pretty sketchy thing. You want yours to have a serial number and then it can also be a fake serial number. So you wanna watch out for that. What I did, I don't know if this actually tells if it's a fake or not. I took my serial number, went to Canon's website and registered it under a bought from eBay because that's where I bought it. And I was able to register it and I didn't have any issues. So my assumption is that it's a legitimate real serial number, which is great. Now, another thing to know about gray market cameras and another myth that is kind of ridiculous, but also just misconceived is the fact that Canon will not touch your gray market camera at all if you break it or whatever, even if you're trying to pay for the service. Now, this is true 
but not true at the same time. It really depends. Now, for an example like my camera, it is a legitimate EOS R. It came in an American box. It has a serial number that was registered and it's a pretty legitimate camera. Um, if I sent this in to be repaired, it would be, have to be paid for. Uh, it doesn't come with a Canon OEM manufacturer's warranty. Um, so I would have to pay for the service. Canon would repair it and I would be fine. Now, if you had a EOS R or whatever camera that had no serial number and you tried to send it in for them to fix it, even if you're trying to pay for the repair, they will most likely not repair it because that is very sketchy on their part. And then also for tech support, um, a lot of the times they don't really ask you for the serial number of your camera for tech support, but if they did and they found it wasn't real, they would not provide you with tech support uh, or any other kind of support for your camera. Uh, so there is that to watch out for as well. And then as for warranty, like I said, mine does not come with a manufacturer's Canon warranty, but the seller does provide a warranty. Now I'm not sure how good that warranty is. It's supposed to be very similar to Canon's warranty. Gray market cameras are not a bad thing. Don't let them scare you away. If you're on a really low budget and you find a camera that's super cheap, but you find that it's a gray market camera, also referred to as import models, that's another thing to look out for. Um, just be aware of what you're buying, do some research on the seller, do some research on that specific camera that they're selling, and just make sure you're getting a legitimate one. And then once you get it, don't be afraid to return it if it, it doesn't look legit, if it looks pretty sketchy or doesn't have a serial number. And always make sure you have a return policy on the thing you buy. So that's kind of it for gray market cameras. Uh, like I said, this one is gray market. It works great, it's phenomenal. It was literally brand new when I got it and I love it. Uh, so if you're looking at gray market cameras and you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section below. I also have a website with a forum where we can all make a community and uh, start answering and asking questions there and getting feedback. So I would love to hear your thoughts on gray market cameras and what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't be afraid to karate chop that subscribe button and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. But other than that, I'll see you on the next one.